Hi. Hi. It's Eve, Chris, and Amanda here from the PB team with our weekly live. Yes, in our brand new office, yes. brand new you office can't space. Really see it no, but um, <laughs> we, we promise that this will be decorated at some point. Up here, it looks like my hands going from yeah. your head. Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to have an IKEA trip, so yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Backdrop. We moved on Monday, so it's our first week in. We're in Wimbledon Village now. Yeah. So yeah, check out our uh, our new address. Check out. Our new address. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, got a new address. <laughs> if you're nearby, let us know because yeah. we are yeah. going to be interviewing people on these lives. So if you do live nearby, handy. <laughs> um, but even if you don't, come and visit us. Yeah, yeah. it's really nice. It really, is, really nice. We're very near the common. It's very peaceful. So yeah. Yeah. Set it in. <laughs> just so we're just doing a Wimbledon chat, I think. Yeah. Like, That's like, a great thing yeah. about Wimbledon. Yeah. <laughs> the Wimbledon village tourism. <laughs> Um, but we've got some beauty news yes. stories that we're we'll going talk to you about talk some about. actual yeah. industry some, stuff too, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shall I start? Do you want to you Yeah, so we put a story up today, which is it's like kind of a sad one. It's that almost a quarter of women feel uncomfortable in their own skin because they think they don't meet typical beauty standards. Um, so this was a survey conducted by Gillette Venus and they were just looking at body confidence and self-esteem. And lots of women in this survey said that they just feel like there's a lot of pressure from the mainstream media to meet a certain beauty ideal and that it makes them feel bad about themselves and 10% of respondents felt that beauty brands in particular don't, 10% think beauty brands use realistic representations of women in their campaigns, that means that 90% of people don't feel like beauty brands are using models that are representative of them so they think they're lacking in diversity, mm. um, which isn't necessarily a new topic, yeah. Yes. It's just a shame that there's more stats coming out showing that people yeah. are feeling bad about themselves because of campaign imagery. So, and kind of surprising, not necessarily surprising, but there's been a lot of movements as we've covered recently to to change that perception. I think a lot of brands are using a lot more diversity in their marketing and their advertising images, mm. um, particularly quite a few of the professional brands, which is great to see. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, hopefully that these kinds of opinions will change and this will help. Yeah. yeah, HD did something, didn't they? Yeah. Dermalogica had their acne yeah. campaign as well. Yeah. Our experience um, included real clients in their last campaign, which showed like mothers and daughters, men, different body shapes, shapes, body shapes yeah. races. So yeah, and there's a lot more yeah. in the makeup brands like me and Jane Harden. Yeah, like yeah. Like Racial diversity in their marketing. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot going on. I think strides are being made, but I guess yes. it's just whether people think it's like enough at the moment. So yeah. interesting to know your opinion. And yeah, it's not definitely. it's not likely it, it's not gonna change everybody's mind straight away. Uh, yeah. Like if there's yeah. if there's one or two things I think it's going to be a longer fight. But fingers crossed we are starting to see some good changes there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It'd be interesting to hear if you're doing anything within your mm. spas and salons because we'll definitely cover it if you are, if there's mm. anything going on to kind of be more inclusive. Yeah. yeah. Um, another big story that we had this week, um, which has got quite a few people talking about <laughs> on our Facebook page. Yeah. Just a few. <laughs> so, um, there was a story about a school near Newcastle um, making headlines. It's been in quite a few of the, the papers actually for banning nail extensions. Um, so there was a, a girl at the school who was wearing acrylic nails, I think she was 15. So she had acrylic nails and was told she had to remove them in order to do her placement on a, a beauty college um, course. So she then refused to remove them, her, her mother backed her up and um, she got put in isolation and wasn't allowed to do her placement. So, I mean, the general opinion on this, I think, has been well, why, who has put an nail extension on a 15 year old girl? Because most of you have said you don't treat uh, under 16s, mm -hmm. which makes a lot of sense. But yeah. also just surprised that it's that it's a thing in schools. Because I think when we yeah. were in school, you absolutely you <laughs> we weren't even treat allowed to wear nail polish. polish. Yeah. Like, I had it physically removed a couple of times. So it is crazy. I guess because they're beauty students as well, they're obviously yeah. interested yeah. in it. But I guess it's the practicalities of being able to. Exactly. Do the treatment do with them all because I find it hard just to type with the yeah. acrylics. Well, well, there was there was one comment about people where they couldn't even pick up pens because so like the nail extensions are so long. I mean, oh for me, God, crazy. the craziest thing that ever got banned at my school was Pokemon cards. So I kind of feel like I'm a bit out of this one, but um, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, obviously, you know, let us know your thoughts on it, um, whether or not you think that it's right that they're banned, whether you think. All of your opinions, let us know. You can comment after the video, during the video, however you want. We will respond as soon as we can. Yeah. yeah. I 
think that was one of the points as well, was that yeah. I think yeah. that's crying emojis at the Pokemon <laughs> thing. We're from the Pokemon era when he originally came out. So. A little bit, a little yeah. bit. Um, but no, it is crazy. I just think, uh, yeah, it's just a weird thing. I just didn't even think kids were allowed to have like no. exceptions. Yeah. I think one of the comments was, well, they're interested in beauty. They're doing beauty courses, so they should absolutely be allowed to experiment with beauty treatments. But, I mean... The, the point, I suppose, is, well, they, they need to be prepared for the world of work. And obviously yeah. in a salon, I mean, as a nail tech, you can often wear extensions, but for most of the treatments you're doing, for massage, you know, mm. for facials, it absolutely mm. isn't practical to have long extensions. So they need to also be prepared for the world of work, which is what mm. the school's meant to do. So, yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah, that story made me feel old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, another piece of news um, is about makeup. And um, pretty much we've had a story recently about consumers are now turning to foundations with added benefits to ace their face. Mm -hmm. So foundations that have moisturising, balancing and SPF properties. So SPF in particular has been the biggest growth category. So foundations with an SPF from 30 to 50, the sales have soared 73% in the first half of this year. Mm. So it looks like Brits are taking sun protection more seriously and they're turning to makeup products to get a good base and have protection. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting because in comparison to more traditional foundations, those sales are declining. So it's showing that people want more from their products. Which yeah, which ties in actually with the story we covered a week or so back about um, particularly young women cutting down the number in their mm. skincare routine, so I suppose people are looking for more multitasking products in skincare and in makeup. And um, again, that's not that's something you're finding because there's pros and cons to that. You know, there are some great multitasking products mm. out there, and I know yeah. some of the brands are, are, are really introducing yeah. products that do more. But at the same time, is it a threat to, to your retail sales? Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, and obviously, you know, it's going to be warm again this weekend, so make sure you are topped up on your SPF. <laughs> oh, <Dad>. Yeah, <laughs> wearing Dad's shirt, I'm going to give Dad advice. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I think as well, people are really time poor. I think that's a lot of what yeah. we're getting out. So people want products that they can use quite quickly in the morning without yeah. having really super complex, time-consuming routines. Um, and yeah, SPF is important, you know. Mm. Well, definitely, yeah. Exactly. It's not a joke in that. In terms of the frizz question, we're more beauty specific, but I would say invest in a hair oil. Yeah. Uh, there we go. How can I get rid of frizz yeah. naturally? If you're not watching this back on Instagram, yeah. you can't see that. That's what the question was. Um, yeah. But we do have a sister title yeah. here called Hairdressers Journal, so if you message them on Instagram, they should be able to recommend some good products for you. Yeah. Well, I think, are we. We've covered everything news wise, I think. Um, hopefully, we will have decorations here soon. Again, my hand is coming out of Amanda's head, so just ignore that. Um, <laughs> Get in touch as well. We yes. want to do more interviews with our lives. Yeah. We're going to bring some interesting people. We've had a few people on in recent weeks. I don't know if you saw us uh, with Susan Routledge and, and Justina from Emo Salon. So, we want to have more people to kind of talk about the industry and talk about what you're doing. So, if you'd like to be involved, get in touch. Yeah. Um, if you want to drop in, we're also going to do some split screen interviews. Um, via Instagram, so yeah, let us know. Yeah, drop us a DM, drop us a message on YouTube, email, however you want to, but do get in touch. We'd love to speak with you. Cool. Thank you very much, everyone, and we will see you uh, next week for another live. Yeah. Exciting. See you later. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Have a really good. Bye.